Hey, what's happening, folks? This is Gerard's Horticulture Culture, and I'm going to do a plant tour update while we're sitting in the house while my plants are growing. I don't think you can say that word. I was trying to keep up on everything. But um, my plants are growing uh, nonstop. Doesn't they don't care about what's going on. They just want me to care for them so they can do what they're supposed to do. So I'm gonna show you what they're doing. Keep watching. <clears throat> First off, I'm going to start with my Chetrosperma rapidisifora that I have held up by a fishing pole, literally a fishing pole because this plant is most likely going to hit my ceiling in about two months. So I have to cut it down, but it's actually growing pretty tall. It's like the second tallest plant that I have this far. As you see, I complimented the pot with some black stone and there's a little closer pick of the fishing pole that I have it climbing on. Pretty cool plant, real non-finicky. Go get yourself one. Next up, in no particular fashion, my Pilea plant, Pilea pepperonis, Chinese money plant, UFO plant, this plant is also showing me so much love. It likes what's going on. I just harvested my recent Pilea pups and this thing is still growing tall and you can see the radial form that I got it in. How I keep that is I have great lighting as you can see right in front of the window and I turn it slightly every day. Next up is my monkey tail cactus and I just got it a little bit over a year ago, a cutting, it rooted and I rooted that larger cutting in the back and now it's showing me two new shoots so I should have some longer, fuller growth coming this summer. I'll keep you guys posted but this is my monkey tail cactus, one of my wish list plants. Check it out. Next is my McCold's Batola Jewel Orchid. This plant is like one of the most striking plants that I have. Um, the leaves, the texture, everything about it. The only thing is it just loves a lot of humidity, so I keep it in a terrarium with like peat moss, activated charcoal, and uh, sand at the bottom. But it's definitely about to grow out of this terrarium, so we're gonna figure out what we're gonna put it in next. But this is also one of my favorite plants that I just fell in love with the first time I saw it. This is my ZZ Raven. Not much to say about this. This is just a stunning plant. I had to do it all black. This was like a statement plant. It's just hot i like the pot that i got it into a little face you really can't see it but uh everything about this plant is amazing this is one of my um like another set it's like a winner whenever you look at it it's just a very nice plant again with the all black stone pot and the foliage very nice plant you definitely got to get one of these easy's got it from uh, amazon for i think 30 bucks check it out Alright, the red heart philodendron is not doing well. I actually got two, and the other one isn't doing well. So, 
for my last video I got a comment saying I should just plant it into peat moss some light airy soil and really don't water it that much so if I water it I do just let the water just rinse out I don't bottle water it and I keep it under lights and we're monitoring it so continue to send positive vibes to the left of the the red heart is my squamiferum philodendron cutting that I took from the mother plant and I'm just watching it grow that squamiferums gave me a lot of babies I have actually two and I'm just seeing how far they can go from propagated covering cuttings into the winter to the summer and this is the second one that I have under these grow lights and they seem to be doing well Squamiferum is like a real easy care plant and over here more collection I have a couple other plants that I want to talk about and we're going to be talking about my ring of fire uh, it's like budding in the middle it's ready to grow but it just seems like it's stuck with all that clumping plant tissue I want to like unravel it but I'm just going to let it do its thing and Alright, so next up the bat, we got the Monstera Thai Constellation. That's the new leaf that unfurled a couple weeks ago. And I did a time lapse on it, check it out. I'll put it in the description below. Not much, just this thing is just looking great. And I think we're on the way to a new leaf soon. Back here. can't really zoom in on that but uh, it's on the way we know it's on the way so she's coming up a little taller still thinking about making a cutting but I'm not sure yet really not sure but I do have it under these lights Amazon I'll put the link in the description below my ring of fire is still like just loving these lights this little ball here, I think it's trying to shoot up to the sky, but I'm not sure why it's like clumping, still staying like that, but that's like the main shoot, and I think she should be coming out there, and then on the second, on the second here, I think we should be getting another shoot, so this thing should be getting bigger, hopefully by the end of summer. Super happy about the month. The tide, I mean the ring of fire, ring of fire plant. <clears throat> Next up, I got this plant. It's supposed to be a uh, pink pink princess, but I was watching my clean leaves and somebody else was talking about how they were doing something where they can make a plant look like a pink princess. I'm not sure if it is a pink princess. This was growing a little taller. I chopped it up. And I'm gonna show you later what I did with the cuttings. Uh, well, I'm water propagating them, obviously, but I chopped them up to see what's gonna happen with those. Cause I just wasn't sure what it is. Cause I got some speckling pink. But it's just not looking like the pink princesses that I see on Instagram kind of looks like a dark lord I'm not sure but we'll see eventually what this thing comes out to be hopefully it's a pink princess what do you guys think let me know in the comment section below down here my fizzle sizzle right next to my string of turtles I fizzle every time it would get dry like the soil would get dry the, the leaves would the leaves would just fall over. Then I had to water it, then they would bounce back, but then they were just falling apart. So I was watching a video on YouTube, and lady, somebody was saying just cut it back because if it gets a little leggy, it just needs more sun. So I put it under my lights and I cut it back. So I'll give you guys an update on what it looks like after I put it under some lights. But I know. My string of turtles loves this thing because these little shoots coming up, they weren't there when I got it. And um, 
we should be getting a bigger plant very soon with the strain of turtles. Like I also got these two from the Philadelphia Flower Show. I think uh, from Wedgwood Gardens for $14.99. And since I'm a uh, peach, whoa, there's a stink bug on my pink princess. And I can't have that dude in here chilling. It's a problem in New Jersey, we get stink bugs. Let me take care of that right now, because I don't know what this guy's doing to my plank princess. I don't know if he's laying some eggs. Looks like he's trying to do something. But we can't have him doing something in here. Alright, so I'm back. Stink bugs removed. Safely let it back outside. If you ever got... I don't know why they call them stink bugs, but I haven't smelled them yet, and I don't plan to, but... Why do they call them stink bugs? Well, actually, I googled it. They spray something as a defense mechanism. Every time I capture it, they don't really <laughs> spray anything. I guess because I always let them outside, so hopefully they never come back. But usually when I get a stink bug in the house, I just let them outside. I don't kill them. Um, just for one, I just don't like to kill bugs. Two, I don't want to smell any stink from any defense mechanisms in the, in the, in the stink bug. Well, on two the plants. Another division of string of hearts which looks like it needs some water down there. It's getting a little crinkly down at the ends. I have a rock in there because usually I tip it out and one of the shoots come out and they get affected so I weigh down the plant with rocks. Now we're going back over to my window. My aloe plant. I got it kind of harnessed wrapped up because it'll go everywhere so we'll have some pups down there if you see on the right <coughs> there's one on the other side right next to my Rex Begonia and I got another I bought another uh, monkey tailed cactus but it's not as hairy as the first one that I showed you here but they kind of look the same but it's nice to see if that one gets a little the hairy. It's a little hairier than the, the one over there that's more established. Now, coming up. Um, this little herb jungle Z rickrack cactus definitely popping out. A lot more growth this, this year during the winter. Just wasn't stopping. Maintaining the water. Summertime, we should expect more growth from it, and maybe a repot. We'll have to repot all these plants, especially Pedro over there. Mexican fence post cactus. He, it, it's growing a little odd for me, but it needs to be outside. But it's definitely growing. Let's we'll see how far it gets, but I definitely probably need to get it in another pot. It's probably going to break that pot. And hopefully, it never happens. But, uh, and then next to it, the, um, it's not a lipstick plant, but it, it's something like it. I forgot what it was, but it is growing tremendously. And you can see, like, the climbers trying to climb up something. I got that discount from Home Depot now. It's taking over the whole pot. So happy about the, uh... <clears throat> progression of it and also I forgot about my variegated string of hearts had that chilling in the corner and I haven't really been keeping an eye on it but it's been holding up looks like after I repotted it I have to check that out make a mental note to check that out because it's and it hides in all these plants <clears throat> it's hard for me to see if I don't see it I forget about it and that's what happened with that but string of hearts is a tough plant I'm guessing the variegated is the same. Donkey's tail cactus. Still donkeying it up. I also took a cutting on my silver sword. It's a little narrow leaf form. I don't know if it's a younger version or older version. 
but I propagated it and it's actually growing roots right now. I'll show you that in a minute. And right above, we got some sticky paper for any intruders that may try to uh, spread love on my plants and populate. We got some aerial action and then we also got some systemic pesticide also to stop any uh, larvae or anything like that along with beneficial nematodes to eat the larvae so we're hitting them both ways up here I have an empty pot no drainage holes I'm trying to think what I should put in it this is going bigger just got this a cutting from my local uh, garden store and it's keep forgetting the name of it but one of those plants that I like the design so we should get a little bit bigger after that easy care plant easy care plant right after I divided it that propagator brought it home with some paper planted it and it started to grow up here my cane begonia I staked it on a pole just to get it a straighter form because the, the begonias at the flower show, the way they looked straight all the way up, they just were just awesome. So it kind of made me want to chase after what they were doing. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish here with the uh, cane begonia. Of course, we got some more Swiss cheese divisions. We got a Xanadu here. Oh, and my, this is my latest leaf of my Monstera Thai constellation that I wrapped up on this pole. We kind of pan out. It's, it's almost the same height as me, which is pretty cool. Let me get you a better, better look. So that's as high as it's getting. Excuse all that, we're just eating stuff. It's what we do as people. <clears throat> but that's the latest leaf. You can see how tall it is. Super big. Should be hitting the ceiling soon. I'll be putting this on Monstera Monday. I forgot to take a picture of that. Love this plant. Love the Monstera. Love it. Keep zooming in on it. You guys like that? What do you guys think about that? It's not a Montag, it's not a variegated or anything like that, but it's just beauty in itself. Even though I got both, I was happy and blessed to have both. But this guy just keeps showing me more and more love. And you kind of see, like I said, the window that I have. I'm happy. This was a selling point for the house when I bought it. I got great window. So all these plants are just eating up all that sun from these bay windows and I was happy to, to bring this along and have this bless me with its presence and like I said the second highest plant was is my tetrasperma getting super big once it couldn't it was once at that level and I was at that level so I don't know how high it's gonna get we're just growing, guys. That's what we do. That's what we do. We keep growing. We keep growing. That's what you. That's that's the what I put at the end of this each video because it's all about growth. If you stop growing, I don't know. I don't know what type of person if you are. You stop growing. And anything, learning, plant growing. I don't care what you do. Whatever you do, just keep growing. Over here. A silver sword cutting from that guy down there and trying to get you a better look at the root system. That's the roots. That's the silver sword. Up here, I saw Noah's Noah's greatest latest leaf little Cretici new leaf oh and over here 
which I was going to show you earlier, what I did with the pink princess cuttings. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I did use rooting hormone on that. It's actually starting to grow leaves. This was the last. This is the last leaf. So uh, I put rooting hormone on that. Skipped it. Put rooting hormone on that. Skipped that one. Then I have another one down there. If it focuses. So I have one, two, three, four, five possible pink princess leaves coming in. If it's a pink princess, hopefully it is. Um, Billy Ty, looking awesome. I think I told you guys about the Burl Max cuttings. Always dividing up that Burl Max. Let me talk about this Euphorbia that I got from Home Depot, right next to my Pilea. Great price. I think it was over under thirty bucks, so I had to pick it up. I usually I do have a smaller pile, uh, Euphorbia, but I had to grab these. I actually sold the other two, and I have this one left. Up here, most likely going to get rid of my jade. I got a bunch of jades, which I divided up. So I'm probably going to just had these stiffen up in the summer hold them up because they're leaning to the side and I'm going to train it to just go on the upward fashion then I'm going to sell it over here my um, baseball bat sense of area looks like I'm going to sell that too so if you're interested contact me on Instagram I, I can ship that out to you I'm not sure what the price but we can make a trade or a deal over here Saints of area moonlight Saints of area this is a regular one and next to the face, lucky bamboo. You gotta be lucky. Then going into my kitchen, I got Hoya Abo Vado, Vada, and I'm trying to air layer it. Here, I'll show you what's going on with that. I just did it about a week ago. I'm trying to see if I can see any roots. I don't think any roots are happening yet. Let's take it off and see what we got. The uh, peat moss looks pretty dry. I'm trying to do this with one hand. A little difficult. Oh yeah, there's something. Got something. There's a little something. I don't know if this. Yeah, that is a root. Hold on, I'm gonna put you down real quick. Pick you back up. So yeah, we got some root forming there. So I'm actually gonna take a cut. Let's take a cut and then I got a new abovado. Didn't take too long, air layering. That was my first air layering success right under the node. Should have did a how-to video. Maybe I'll do that later. Actually, I did do a how-to video. If you check it out, look at my videos. I did a how-to on how to air layer. So this actually took three weeks. So I'm actually gonna stop right now and take a cutting and put that in some LECA.
Over here I got a Scandapsis near my bird feeder. Just scared away a bird, but I think one's coming back. Usually they feed in the morning, so let me not disturb them. But that's what's going on. And then up here, top of my fridge, got a Manhula. Then I got my Christmas cactus starting to bloom. Cuttings. Got a very leggy. Forgot the name. <laughs> It'll come to me. And I got a spider plant up top here. Then we got some more propagation. I'm just leaving this is for show. It's a Cebu Blue. And over here is uh, it's a Swiss cheese plant. It's propagating. Over here I got a uh, Billy Thai cutting, propagating. More Swiss cheese propagating. Actually, I was using this self-watering thing. It's a nice little setup. It came with a wick and everything. And over here, you got a cutting from a Hindu rope, rope which needs some water ASAP. So we're going to do that now. In this jar, it's a plug it's like a foam plug and just stuck a cutting in there and then the cutting start to root out so when it gets wet it just absorbs all the nutrients you can kind of see the roots a little better down here matter of fact let me take it out for you so you can see what's going on down there popping I actually need to feed it I have not fed it yet just straight up water they're still hanging on don't you worry we got a lot of stuff for you lots I'll take you down and show you my fertilizing shelf I uh, forgot to mention these guys um, more of these silver dollar Hoya I think I have three cuts that I'm trying to see how they develop and grow. I'm hearing they're a slow grower. Which I think they are. So we'll see after the summer how fast and how much they grow. And that's my shed back there. Don't mind that. I'm so happy I took a cutting of my propagated Holly Abavada. I just showed you that. We're going to leave it at that but I want to show you downstairs oh and that's what I did with the cutting the Hoya provider put it in some leka and see what happens next oh, I forgot to mention my Sayuri snake down here also popping then down there got of course escargot begonia pilea and I cut took a cutting of the sayori and propagated over here which is awesome very nice very nice more plants more plants very much more plants this is what we need we need more plants so we're going downstairs to the shelf with liquid fertilizer top here I got Osmocote, Bioroot, Biomarine, Dustin, Diatomaceous Earth, Oregon Bark Mix, another slow release fertilizer got some Super Thrive that's another fertilizer fish fertilizer for outside because that stuff stinks got sea cow, sea kelp Good stuff, two zero zero, and I got some uh, root rot for my tomatoes, blossom and rot. 
whole lot going on when I was growing outside. I'll, I'll be growing outside shortly, just waiting for the weather to get a little better. This is my little shelf where I keep all my ferts, heat, heat packs, diet tomatoes, earth, and all that jazz. All right, we're gonna be feeding that, uh, sorry if it's a little louder, right next to my air conditioning unit, but we're gonna be feeding that Hindu rope with some of this stuff right next, next. This is the other side of the, the downstairs. And I got plants up here and I have plants down here. Now I decided to get another light timer with the natural light because it's more presentable and I've had good success with it. So I decided to get two. And down here I got my orange begonia, moonlight begonia, I mean moonlight philodendron, silver sword hastums. And this guy, that leaf has been staying there for the longest. I'm not sure. I must have stressed it out. It was like growing and it stopped and all these leaves started to... I think it went to like a dry spell and just got shocked. But we're going to water it again because it definitely needs some water. Over here I got my cutting that I took many cuttings from. The mother plant for the Tetrasperma rapidifora. It's probably going to start growing out from this leaf here. And I took this cutting from it. Just growing more leaves. Sorry, we're shooting through hoops over here. It's just hard to manage. But that came from that plant. And over here, got more growth popping. And those two came from that plant as well and we're seeing more growth out of there which is awesome a little billy tie which I took a cutting of which is doing well there we I got another Jap Asian lion that I got from Goodwill I love the Asian stuff especially I got that dirt cheap from Goodwill shout out to Goodwill it's right in front of my door to protect many plant killers and since this morning I'll show you how I feed my fish my fish ultimately feed my plants so what I do is get a bag of koi and I break it up because my little black koi is the smallest one down there he's still making it the teeth they really don't have teeth so I just leave them I, I I water while well, I let the food soak and this these are supposed to get soft and water really quick so I'm just softening the pellets so the plant the uh, I'm sorry not the plants the fish can easily digest them including a small one if they're too hard they just can't bite through them but this is how I feed my fish I let that soak for a little bit soakity soak I'll come back and I'll show you how I feed that always like seem to like nibble on each other for some reason I don't know if it's like a male or female thing I was reading um, somewhere that they just do that but they're definitely hungry definitely getting bigger hopefully I can put them outside and get something going outside get a koi pond get koi popping So a little bit flaky right now, so I think we're okay to feed these hungry monsters. And I like to feed them like at least two times a day, most likely three. Uh, it's super hard to do with one hand. So now, feeding begins. Kind of separate it so they don't overcrowd a spot. The 
black. Oh, he ate. Just make sure. I just make sure he ate because he just sometimes he he chases the other ones when he can't get food. I'll wait, wait for him to digest because you see all the big ones. They're just going for seconds, and he's still on his first. Just because he's a little smaller, I should have got him all the same size, but I just couldn't resist getting. That old black one. Coming back up to get more. In fact, let's turn the lights on. on. Everybody's fed. It was my fault. Like I said, I should have got them all the same size, but he's he's a little bit behold behind a little bit, so I just like to soak the food for him because he's basically got a mouthful in there. And this stuff doesn't really, it breaks down very well because you can see my water is pretty clear because it doesn't make your water cloudy and I also keep up with my water changes. I take out 30% of the water. I also water my plants with this. So all this is actually going back into the plants which is awesome and I got like it's not like a super load but these plants are fish are going to get bigger so the bio load is going to get a little heavier as they get bigger so we may have to decrease the, the size because they'll outgrow the, the tank and the bigger the tank they are the bigger they'll grow so I'm actually stunting the growth by having them in this little tank so hopefully we can get something done outside because these guys did get a little bigger especially that guy and him I'm gonna give room for that guy. Okay. He'll get a little bigger too, because koi do get super big. Chibunkins and all that jazz. That's the fish. Sorry that was a little choppy, but thanks for hanging with me to the end. If you got any questions or concerns, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and keep growing.